Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. I am your host, Nathaniel Rumpeljance, and today we got to talk about the fact that during Nintendo's financial briefing yesterday, when investors got to ask questions, it came up that Nintendo themselves might actually be considering raising the price of Nintendo Switch. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Which is really interesting considering that one, we're almost through the sixth year of the platform and by now, most other companies would have lowered the price of their platform to keep it selling well. And also because Nintendo Switch sales are down 19% year over year. So if sales are down, why would you do something that could cause sales to, well, maybe be hurt a little more by making your product more expensive? And this is interesting because while Nintendo's not going to raise it now, nor this holiday, we could see a price hike in 2023. And what does this do for the idea of Nintendo releasing new hardware next year? That is not going to happen. If they're already going to hike the price of the current Switch, that would make it sound like if they were going to release new hardware, it would be even more expensive, wouldn't it? So let's talk about that because we're getting this off an article from Reuters Japan. So this is a very well-sourced article. These are from people that were actually at the investors meeting. And here's what the article says. It says, Nintendo president carefully considers Switch hardware price hike. Here's what Shintura Furukawa said about raising the price. We have no plans to raise the price of the home game console Nintendo Switch at this time. It is certain that the yen has continued to depreciate in recent years, so we will continue to carefully consider the situation while keeping an eye on the situation for potentially raising the price in the future. Now, look, this doesn't necessarily mean that the price is going to get raised, and Nintendo's been asked this question a couple times because the yen itself has been depreciating in value significantly to the point that it's actually hurting profit margins. When people talked about how, how can they sell Switch OLED for $50 more when you can get a Steam Deck for $400, well, what we have to remember is every sale of Switch has to be converted into yen because that is where Nintendo is based. They're base value isn't based in US currency. It isn't based in the Euro. It's based in yen. So every sale overseas has to be reconverted to yen. And as the yen weakens, it makes those sales worth less. So yeah, Ideally, if they were a U.S.-based company, they would go off the U.S. value, the USD value, but unfortunately, that doesn't matter because the USD has to be converted into yen, and yen is basically hitting massive inflation rates at, at, at a rate. Our rates are way higher. Like We're in a recession, factually, in many parts of the world, and yet the yen itself is seeing massive inflation, and that's causing Nintendo to not really make a lot of profits. Now, they're making still pretty good money and you know, 100 million more yen in revenue. First of all, congratulations, Mr. Krabs. Hello, I like money. What inspired you to build a second Krusty Krab right next door to the original? Money. Uh, compared to you know the year prior, just because they've been selling a crap load more software. And obviously they're not talking about raising software prices at this point. But it's interesting because yes, Nintendo did lower their forecast to switch to 19 million for this fiscal year. And presumably Nintendo Switch would probably sell less than 19 million next year, maybe closer to 15 million if I had to just take a, a, a shot in the dark. And we talked about how maybe this means it's time for Nintendo, now that they're on the downswing, to maybe start, you know, considering releasing new hardware. Bottom line. Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. No, not gonna happen. <laughs> not gonna happen. But with the yen worsening, it makes it really hard to do that, at least, you know, in a economical sense, because Look, if they have to, if they feel like they might have to raise the price of Switch next year, which, by the way, they have been refusing to do to this point. But if they say, "Oh man, we got to, we got to hike it twenty bucks," well, that is significant because that means a new platform would have to launch probably at at least four hundred. And while many of you guys might be willing to spend that sort of money, Nintendo might look at that as, "Hey, these these." components are more expensive, we might actually lose money at $400 USD, right? You know, they sell it at $399. That might actually be a loss. Now, Nintendo's not losing per Switch unit right now, and typically what happens over time is that, you know, Switch and, and other electronics become cheaper because the components become cheaper, but due to the unique situation of the pandemic and the chip shortages, things haven't actually gotten that much cheaper at manufacturing 
Meanwhile, inflation rates are skyrocketing, especially in Japan. And now we're at this point where Nintendo's like, man, we might, you know, we're not doing it yet, but we are watching the market and we will consider possibly doing that in the future. That is huge. That's quite big. Impressive. Now, what does this mean in general? Well, if you own a Switch now, you obviously don't have to worry about anything. But if you're someone who's thinking about buying a Switch next year or even a Zelda Special Edition, you can maybe see how Nintendo's actually already played around with the pricing this year. Because since the Switch OLED came out, every Special Edition Switch OLED has costed $10 USD more. And people were yelling at Nintendo over this. Look at them. They're being ridiculous. You don't get anything extra with it. It's just the console. They didn't do this for the Animal Crossing one. They didn't do this for the Mario one back in the day. So here we are. Nintendo is being crazy and hiking the prices of their special edition switches. The Pokemon one, as an example, is $360. And yet, as we sit here today, it sort of makes financial sense why they're doing it. They have already technically hiked the price, just only of special editions. Will they hike the price of everything? I don't know. So I'm interested what you guys think about this. And what do you think this means for the longevity of Switch? By the way, I know that some people think I'm really down on Switch and feel like there has to be new hardware next year. I just want to throw out there, 19 million sales in a year is incredible. Uh, it's still higher than the peaks of most systems when they're peaking in sales. So Switch is still you know, thriving. The software is thriving. Switches are still selling. I know right now this holiday season in the United States, Switch is probably the easiest to get platform. And I get that. That's not necessarily true in Japan. It's still fairly difficult to get one in Japan readily and easily. I'm not saying that you can't just go buy one. I think there was some stock on Amazon Japan just yesterday, their number one online retailer. But, you know, you go in person, a lot of stores are still sold out. They're not doing lotteries anymore, so it's not as bad as it once was. But it's still, it's not a great situation in Japan. So they're not as readily stocked as we are. But I think that might change in December because then they'll, you know, focus on, you know, if you guys didn't know, their sort of Black Friday big sale season is right at the end of December. Ours is obviously in November, so there could be a priority in stock right now uh, to the U.S. as they're trying to get as many units in stores before we get to the big sales period. And we have Pokemon coming out, which assuredly might actually push sales. It would be interesting if Nintendo actually beats their projections, but Nintendo did note the semiconductor thing is getting better, and several other investors in Tokyo have thrown out through this week that they don't really buy Nintendo's semiconductor uh, you know, claims because they are paying attention to manufacturing and noticing the semiconductor issues are actually getting significantly better and a new factory opens next year. So look, this might have nothing to do with the launch of new hardware, but what I will say is it's quite interesting that Nintendo's considering raising the price. And what I want to know are what you guys think about this down in the comments below. And if you made it this far into the video, you know, subscribing to the channel would just be swell. Also, if you're looking for a comfortable chair, Ewin Racing's got your back. Why don't you go check that link in the description. Use code Nintendo Prime for 20% off. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we'll see about the podcast tonight. I'm not sure if we're going to have a podcast episode tonight. Uh, there's a few things going on. One, uh, the reason we didn't have Prime 5 today was because I wasn't feeling well last night. And yeah, I got up and did what I needed to do, took care of my responsibilities. But I decided for the best interest of my health that I needed to get extra sleep today. So I, I missed the indie world, which, by the way, for those who want my thoughts on the indie world, mwah, incredible, incredible, incredible. Sports story is all I needed. It's dropping in December. Looks better than ever. Inscription was officially announced, even though we've already known. So, look, yeah, it's it, it, it was a, a pretty good indie world to me. I know some people want Hollow Knight. I get it. We all want that game. It's clearly not coming this year. So, anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys in that next video.